City Council meeting for Monday, February 27th, 2017. This time, can we have the roll call, please? Council Member DeRossett. Here. Council Member Lane. Here. Council Member Rhino. Here. Vice Mayor Klein. Here. Mayor Vieira. Here. Next, we will have the invocation by Mark Whitehead, a chaplain, followed by the Pledge of Allegiance. Lord, we thank you for this great day in our beautiful city. We ask your blessing on our council meeting tonight. We pray for wisdom in all matters discussed. Lord, we thank you for protection over our city from the recent floods that have hit so many of our neighboring areas. We thank you for protection over our citizens. We ask you to continue to keep your hand on our city, God. In your name we pray, Jesus. Amen. Amen. Pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you, Chaplain. We have no presentations this evening, so we'll move to citizens' communications to Council on matters not included on the agenda. While the City Council welcomes and encourages participation in City Council meetings, Adopted rules allow no more than five minutes for expression of non-agenda items. Matters under the jurisdiction of the City Council and not on the posted agenda may be addressed by the general public. However, California law prohibits the City Council from taking action on any matter which is not on the posted agenda unless it is determined to be an emergency by the City Council. Citizens are entitled to address the City Council on any agenda item subject to the five minute provision. At this time, I do have one speaker card, and then I will also open it up and see if there's anyone that would like to speak. The first one is from Daryl, uh, is it Cor Corporal? Okay, if you want to come forth. And uh, thanks for letting me be here. Um, I was trying to get a yard sale. I had one last year. I'm moving to uh, Texas the 16th of next month, and I have a lot of stuff I need to get rid of, and I went to apply for it, and they said I'd have to come talk to you guys. Okay, um, so you, I think we currently, what we allow two per year? And Correct, two in a calendar year, and, and I did meet with, with Daryl last week, uh, indicated the municipal code unfortunately is very uh, stringent, there's no provisions for me to waive that, um, there are two per year, um, and he's asking for a third, he is doing it the right way, obviously we have people in the city who ask for, or don't ask, and have hard sales more frequently than twice a year, um, but um, the situation is somewhat unique. Um, I don't have the authority under the municipal code to, to make any variances there, so uh, he, he's coming here looking for, for direction from the council. Okay, um, so if, uh, I guess there would be a couple of questions on how we would do this. I personally don't have an issue. I think, I think the whole intent was we didn't want someone to have a garage sale every weekend, and I, he has a legitimate reason why he would like it, and, and, um, and I appreciate him coming to the city and asking before just doing it. Um, so I don't know, do we need, is this something, Tom, that we would take a straw poll or what? Well, yes, we do need that from you, but I would say to f just to flesh out a little bit more what you said, in light of the circumstances, that is the intent of the ordinance, the fact that he did try to go through channels and under the circumstances of why he wants a third one, you could direct staff to uh, handle this internally. Okay. That's what I'd recommend you do. What, okay, what's the, I'll, let's start down the line. What's the will of the council? Yes, absolutely. Okay. I'm surprised you just didn't have it anyway. Most people would have just had it, <laughs> you know. And, and I still get the permits, too. I only had one this year, but still. Yeah. Thanks. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yes. Okay, so I'll direct staff to work with you to, to make that happen. Okay. So I'll just come back in tomorrow and go over there? Or? Yes. Yes, just come back in the finance department. We'll take care of it. Appreciate it, guys. No problem. Good luck to you. Thank you. Okay, is there anyone else that would like to speak to the council on a non-agenda item? Leonard Shepard, 2841 Fowler Road, number 71, in the town of Ceres, and I'll tell you what, that was a great move. That was what you guys just did, showed that you have compassion and that you're willing to make a little bit of 
leeway for somebody who's doing it the right way instead of 40 signs around still on the power poles from last year. Uh, I congratulate the, you on that. <laughs> but it's kind of funny. People were putting up signs everywhere saying, pray for rain, pray for rain, pray for rain. We got it. And now they're saying, oh my gosh, you know, it's terrible. And the state of California, the idiots in the Capitol still haven't learned anything. We need to build, you, you guys probably all agree, we need more water storage so that our farmers can have water and the little fishies in the river could have water. Instead, the, I call them environmentalist wackos, if there's anybody in here that uh, wants us to go back to where we were in 1850, which I read an account of two brothers who sailed a boat from Sacramento to Bakersfield on Lake San Joaquin, which was the San Joaquin Valley. And the average depth of the was about 20 feet. That's what happens when you don't have any flood control. And I, I just find it amusing that everybody's so worried about you know, the conserving water and, and the stupids already said, no, we're, we gotta keep conserving water. Build dams, that'll conserve water, that's, you know. But I think I'm probably with all you preaching to the choir, so I'll let that one go. But anyway, uh, that was a good move. Thank you very much. Is there anyone else that would like to speak? Uh, good evening. Mike Miller from Series Firefighters Local 3636. I'm speaking tonight in an effort to gain your support for our MOU proposal that you'll be discussing in closed session tonight. Uh, please don't take this as a lack of understanding of the ongoing and projected budget crisis as we're all aware of our looming shortfalls. Here are just a few facts that we'd like to remind this council of. Our members did not receive raises ba based on class and comp studies back uh, done in 2006. We gave up 10% of our pay several years ago uh, and have gone without cost of living raises for over eight years. We endured several years of frozen step increases and debilitating cuts to the fire budget. <clears throat> we are now equal to or less than the number 12 city, Los Banos, on the agreed upon list of comparison cities. We have used, we, we used to have parity with the police, but now our middle engineer rank is four to $500 per month below an entry level officer and our captain ranks are $800 to $1,000 per month below a police sergeant. Our entry-level firefighters, they don't come anywhere near an entry-level police officer and is slightly higher than a non-managerial and for code enforcement officer. We continue to lose personnel to neighboring agencies for better pay and opportunities at an alarming rate, resulting in, resulting in large amounts of precious general fund money required to hire and train new recruits. However, even with the mentioned deficiencies in our contract bud and budget, our members are still motivated to provide the citizens with premium fire protection and emergency services. I believe this department has been able to provide these great response times and truly professional service largely due to resource sharing agreements with Modesto, Stanislaus, and Turlock Fire Departments. The items that we're asking for, for will have minimal, impact, minimal impact to the general fund, yet show, would, show, would show appreciation for the many years of personal sacrifice from our members of this organization during such hard budget times. Please support our contract, pro, or pro, excuse me, please support our contract proposal that you'll be discussing tonight. I do have several copies of what I just read. Uh, there's a lot of details in there. I'd like to have, uh, give you a copy if, if I may. You want to hand it to the clerk, please? All right.
Thank you very much. Okay. Is there anyone else that would like to speak to the council on a non-agenda item? Uh, thank you for letting him have his yard sale. I've already been over there and I bought, don't tell Azevedo that I bought more stuff. Uh, I got my water shut off for the first time since 1972 because I didn't pay my water bill because Toby told me not to pay the bill and so I told the wife not to pay the bill and she didn't even pay the water bill so that was our fault but we paid that and we got that out of the way there's um, I'm going I want to be I want to ask if I can be on the next meeting because five minutes is not going to be enough because I'm going to go all the way back because I've been on Facebook for not having my yard clean I've been on Facebook for this or that and everybody's laughing at me you know I ran a flag football program for the city you know I went down there and built the ballpark built the lights and, and helped down there for many years the reason that they wouldn't let me coach down there is because the person the president was from Denair and I wouldn't let his kids play on the Walter White team you didn't go to the Walter White school you're not playing in, in the program and everybody knows that that's how I keep it in series so that that that's why they told me he told me that I couldn't coach down there a lot of this is the same as as, as forty dollars for the kids to play basketball everybody knows that now then I look in the paper and I see the Arrowhead Club they're having a tournament in Turlock and it costs hundred and twenty five dollars and you're guaranteed two games go out to the baseball park and it's hundred and twenty five dollars plus you gotta sell forty dollars worth of candy plus you gotta get a sponsor plus you what and these kids over at Central Valley is having fight and kicking kids bullying why the kids don't have a place to play this is irritating me this is this is irritating me we don't have a place to, for the kids to play and what else are they going to do what what else are they going to do this really frustrates me and I was told that I couldn't run a business or so I got rid of my pipe vice I got rid of all my thread tools and then one of the people that worked for you his pump went out in his backyard and pulling sand through his hot water heater and getting everything so I called my buddy that I sold all I gave all my stuff to didn't sell it to him we went over there and fixed it and he said you don't want no money and I said no I don't want no money and the other guy he paid him and he said okay if you're not going to take any money here's some money whenever you go back to Texas and watch your daughter play you can buy dinner for Donnie and you and I said okay so that's what I did I didn't get any money and then my other friend called me up one other friend he put siding on his house and his leader wouldn't work so he asked me to come over and fix this I said I can't do it anymore because I can't take money and he said okay I'll give you a bottle of tequila or vodka or whatever it is I don't drink so that's what he gave me and I said I don't want no pay for it and he said okay just take the bottle of whiskey or vodka or whatever it is it'll be in my cupboard for years so that's what I did so I, I'm not I'm not getting any pay or anything from my so the next meeting I'm gonna have it when I when I ran the flag football program how many hours I worked down there how many hours I worked in the basketball program because your program Cassie Baker got paid to run your program and Tracy Bull got paid to run your basketball program. Art Maley, Jim Marshall, Burrow Condit, Joanne Borges, Kathy Casey, and Paul Caruso gave me the series youth basketball to run. I don't know why that the city pays somebody else to run a program that's not even series youth basketball. It's the Hooters. It's the Hoosiers or who, whatever it is. Okay. So Don, what, I'm, I'm missing the point here. What, 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 are you, what are you asking for us to do? Well, I'm, I'm gonna, I'm, I don't know. I'm going to put it in, in, the, in the Facebook, too, that n not only I have a dirty yard and a place that I have done good things. I've helped my neighbors. So 
I, I want to I want to put it on Facebook that I that I've ran a flag football program for the city. I've I've ran baseball out there. I put the lights up out there, and everything that I've done for the city. It's not all. It, it I've been in there that like uh, uh, Limpke Donaldson won't talk to us. Why should I talk to you? I don't have to talk to you. I've been running this thing for 25 years, and that's in the paper. So. I'm going gonna, I'm, I'm gonna to start putting it on, and I'd like to have next time. And this is what I'm fighting, too. Hey, Don, can I, can Don, I, yes. listen, uh -huh. I, I'm going to say a couple of things. Number one is I got the opportunity to play, I think, in the very first basketball that you coached when I was at Carroll Fowler back in 1978. I didn't know what year it was. I and, remember. And, and I watched you. Just give me a second here to talk. And I've watched you this whole time for the last 40 years to see the, all the great things Don Donaldson has done. And I'll tell everybody, and I'll tell the serious career, that you've done some amazing things for kids in our community, for people. Even coming to my house and helping me with my air conditioning unit, and just all those different things. And, and I see this, and, and I'm just, this is me and you. We've been friends for how many years? Long time, right? I will sit down with you anytime, Starbucks, and talk. And I'll go on Facebook, and I'll put all the great things Don does, did, because Don did do those things. There's no question about that. But not to cut off the mayor or anybody else, but you know, there's only five minutes for the citizen communication thing going right, on. Right. And you're here all the time. And, and I see my friend unhappy because I'm going to tell you that you're my friend regardless of all the things that have happened in this world, right? But I, I would love to sit with you and have a cup of coffee. Yeah. Okay? All right. Yeah. But it, it, that's not the only thing. That's, and I know you guys don't have anything to do with this, but you know, I'm a Vietnam veteran. And I'm, uh, I'm other things too. Determined to be a Vietnam area herbicide exposed veteran. And the other day they sent me a letter saying, you have to prove that you was in Vietnam in 1965. You have to prove that you was on the ship, USS Guide MSO 447, and we're denying you health care for that. And that, that aggravates me too. You know what I mean? You, you serve your country, and you're over there and they give you a medal, they give you everything, and then they tell you that you have to prove that you was on a ship in a combat zone. And that, that's, that's pretty frustrating too, you know what I mean? So I, that, that's what I'm fighting also. Not only you people, I mean this is not, I mean, I, it, it, we've got it cleared up with Toby and I, you know, with our, but things are just it was in the paper and people coming up to me and said don you clean your yard up yet well, what do you mean my motorhome won't start now because i had to unplug it which i shouldn't have never had to unplug now i've got batteries in there that's i don't know what i'm going to do with but things that happen okay. everything happened and it shouldn't happen you okay. know what i mean people don't come to me and say well don uh, how come limpke you won't talk to limpke it's only one-sided. How come when Azevedo put it, they didn't come to me and say, do you have? No, he just go ahead and put it in the paper. I don't understand why they do that. I, yeah, I don't understand. I don't know, Don, either, but I, we're going to have to move on, if you don't mind, and, and oh, I'll be yeah, happy okay. to come have coffee with you as well okay. and, and Councilman Murdoch. Can I be on the next list? Um, I, I think it's best if we just kind of sit down with you separately, uh, and then, you know, if, if we need to help you with Facebook or put something out there. I couldn't agree with you more. You have done a lot for the community. Um, but I, I think we is be better if that's handled separately. I, I don't know that we need to have the discussion with all of the other folks. OK, thank you. Okay. Is there anyone else that would like to speak to the council on a non-agenda item? OK, with that, we will move on to appointments to boards and commissions. We have none. Conflict of interest declaration. Is there anyone that would like to declare a conflict of interest on the consent calendar or public hearing? Um, Tom, just one question for you uh, on item number eight because I'm one of the uh, applicants. Do I need to turn that over to the vice chair? No, you could participate. Okay. Okay, with that, we will move to the consent calendar. All matters listed on the consent calendar are considered routine in nature and will be enacted by single motion unless otherwise requested by an individual council member or the public for special consideration. Otherwise, recommendation of staff will be accepted and acted upon by roll call vote. 
At this time, is there anyone on the council that would like one of the consent calendar items pulled for further discussion? Anyone in the public? Okay, hearing none, I'll bring it back to the council for direction on the consent calendar items. Move to approve one, two, three, four, five, six, and seven. Second. We have a motion and a second. Can we have the roll call, please? Councilmember DeRosset? Yes. Councilmember Lane? Yes. Councilmember Rhino? Yes. Vice Mayor Klein? Yes. Mayor Vieira? Yes. Motion passes 5 0. Thank you. We have no unfinished business this evening. We have one public hearing item, item number eight hearing to select a nominee for consideration of appointment as a city member to the San Joaquin Valley Air Pollution Control District Governing Board. Mr. Wells. Thank you, Mayor. I uh, apologize to Council for getting this to you a little bit later than we normally pro do, but uh, on Friday uh, we did receive some information from the Air District uh, confirming that this action needed to be taken prior to March 10th, um, which is before our next Council meeting on March, uh, March 13th. So uh, we added this item to the agenda on Friday, uh, amended it in a staff report as well. Um, just for information for the audience, this, this item is selecting a nominee to uh, the Special City Selection Committee for the appointment to the San Joaquin Valley Air Pollution Control District Governing Board. Mayor Vieira has sat on that board uh, in the past, uh, has applied for that, as well as uh, an individual from the City of Patterson, Council Member Dominic Farina. Um, those are the two applicants for the Council's consideration in, a, in accordance with the, uh, the Board's guidelines. They require us to conduct a uh, public meeting. We did schedule it under a public hearing just so we make sure that we get any communication from the public um, and then uh, council takes an action and your your options are to uh, approve one of the two candidates uh, yourself would be one of those um, or to not recommend a candidate going forward uh, it's up to the, to the council after hearing from the public on which direction you'd like to do once that's completed if you did so move forward that resolution would be forwarded by the clerk to uh, the governing board for their information and, and final vote process okay at this time We'll open it up to the public. Is there anyone that would like to speak on this item? Just a question. Uh, it was some, someone from the city council represent the nominee, or, or what is this? Oh, okay. I didn't understand anything Toby said. Elected officials are required to serve on this board. Okay. So it's the elected officials are selected throughout. There's a large city representative and small city representatives. And this air board goes from, in essence, Bakersfield to Stockton. So it's a very large district with lots of uh, representation across the valley. Um, Mayor Vieira so, has sat on this board before, so he knows it uh, very well. Well, I, I got no problem with that. At least we have one intelligent person on the board. <laughs> thank you. So thank you. Uh, just a little bit of background on that um, that I can provide. The the air district for uh, the San Joaquin Valley is made up, uh, the, the board is made up of one county supervisor from all of the counties in the jurisdiction. They serve uh, at as long as they would like. Uh, currently, the representative for our county board is uh, Ms. Olson. It was originally Bill O'Brien. And then there are two governor appointees. They are um, usually medical doctors and then five city representatives that have to have a requirement of, I believe it's three, two, it's either two or three large cities, which means a population over 100,000, and then three smaller cities under 100,000. And the way that the legislature made the makeup of the board is when one large city is selected, then it discounts other regions in order to make up that. So in this last round of elections, um, Mayor Brazil lost his reelection. He was the mayor for Augustine and a council member from Bakersfield, which was the large city lost. As a result, the rotation went to the city of Stockton would be the large city and then the small city would have to come from Stanislaus County. No one from the city of Stockton submitted an application, so it defaulted back to Bakersfield. We had two applications submitted for the small city here in Stanislaus County. Mine was one, and then Dominic, who is a council member for the city of Patterson, was the other. All of the cities here in Stanislaus County will have this agenda item, and they will 
do one of two things, either choose him, me, or no one. And then, um, and then the candidate with the most um, city votes will go before the citywide selection committee, which is made up of all 52 cities in the Air District, and you have to get at least 31 of those cities to vote for your appointment. So there's where we are with it. This is the first step of, of that process. So, <laughs> Yes, I, I did serve for six years um, on that board from 2006 to 2012 and was the chairman in 2010, so I'm, I'm a little familiar with what goes on there. Any questions of me or the, the or, or the other candidate? No. No. Okay. Uh, again, is there anyone else in the audience that would like to speak on this? Okay. With that, we'll close the public comment and bring it back to the council for direction. Sure. I, I nominate uh, Mayor Vieira as a candidate for this board. Second. Okay. We have a motion and a second. Can we have the roll call, please? Councilmember DeRosset. Yes. Councilmember Lane. Yes. Councilmember Rhino. Yes. Vice Mayor Klein. Yes. Mayor Vieira. Yes. Motion passes 5-0. Thank you. Thank you. Um, new business. We have none this evening. We have one discussion item. Finance Department, Utility Division, sign up for service requirements and procedures. Mr. Wells or Ms. Dean? Whoever. Yeah, I'll, I'll start and Suzanne can uh, follow up with some information as necessary. <clears throat> so as Council recalls, uh, December 12th meeting during the Citizens Communication section of the regular meeting, um, we had two citizens inquire about the process that was used by our finance department to sign up for service. Um, primary conversation and concern was were the uh, requirements uh, too onerous or uh, is there anything we could do to make that process um, a little easier. So uh, as provided in the staff report, uh, staff did some informal surveys of, of several surrounding cities and other jurisdictions um, and provided the information that we use for the sign up for services. Um, in essence, it breaks down simply, uh, the detail again is there written, but simply some jurisdictions choose a higher deposit or uh, written documentation. We, we, we fall on the other end of the spectrum in terms of written documentation requiring um, a potential uh, user of our services to provide written documentation in the form of a rental agreement if it's a tenant or a grant deed or some other escrow paperwork showing that they are an owner of the property. So that's our kind of default. Um, City of Turlock, for example, uh, uses a deposit that's about $350. Um, TID similarly, uh, but do not require any evidence of their relationship to the property. Um, TID, if they don't have any evidence, will look back at three months of the previous, previous user's bill um, to establish their deposit. So it's kind of the two end, ends of the spectrum. From uh, our staff's perspective, uh, we'd recommend the procedures uh, to stay the same. Uh, we do feel it is appropriate and it is very consistent and similar to what the City of Modesto uses as our most uh, common neighbor. Um, we do. Um, you know, do what we can to recognize unique situations and, and get the paperwork as necessary. Um, there's always, um, as we heard today, some anomalies that come up from, from time to time, but we do feel as a policy that applies to all folks, this is the most, uh, the most effective way to do it um, that we've found. We haven't seen anything else out there to the, the one-offs are difficult to set policy for. I mean, we set policy for that meets, you know, in most cases, 98, 90% of the time, and this is the policy we do feel is appropriate, but um, we would ask if council wants to direct us to change that policy and if you were to move in the um, direction of more deposit um, and less written documentation, um, just we would, we would ask that that be applied, you know, blanket across the board again so that it's consistent and that would be more onerous for some of our more lower income folks, which is hence why we kind of lean towards the written documentation part being more um, more appropriate for our local situation. Okay. Suzanne, if you wanted to add any other to that. The city of Turlock did indicate that they have issues with collecting since they don't have adequate documentation on the people occupying um, residents. Um, we have had uh, good success with being able to collect on accounts that don't pay. The one issue we do have is our deposits are now so low and with our rate increases, um, the deposits um, for sewer don't even cover one month service and our water deposit is about $30 less than the average monthly bill. So um, w when we turn things over to collection, they're usually high dollar amounts. 
Um, but we have good success at collecting because we have all of the documentation necessary to identify the people. Okay. Vice Mayor Klein. Well, I'm, I'm sitting here reading, and I and I was thinking about, you know, what do you what do you need to get started? I mean, if you're a tenant or or a renter, uh, I think we should have at least two months worth of deposit, which would be, you know, uh, $150. The average bill is about 130, so 260 dollars would be a two months deposit. Um, that's for all three services. For um, sewer, our deposit is 25 dollars, and the average bill is about 60 dollars. Okay. Well, then I think I think we need to get deposits for at least a, an additional month. So you're paying the first month and, and last month. Um, if you're a homeowner, uh, my question is is when it says and or line letter of credit. So, if I own a piece of property here in town and I get a home for a rental, I establish it. And as I'm fixing it up, I want to turn the utilities over to me. Can they just, if I come into the finance, can you just look at my past history on my residence that I have now without me having to go out and get a, line, a, a letter of credit? Yes. Okay. So that would be substantial, just telling you where I live, you would go back to my history, and I don't have to chase down everything else. Right. Okay. But he would still need to show that he owns the property. Yes. But he wouldn't have to go to another utility to get a letter of credit because we have history of good credit here. Okay. Any other comments before I open it up to the public? Okay, at this time, I'll open it up to the public. Anyone that would like to speak on this item? Okay. Hearing none, I'll bring it back to the council. Just so that I can summarize here, um, we currently do not require deposit. We look for a valid rental agreement, whether you're a renter or an owner. Is that correct? No, we do require deposits unless you have good credit okay. with us or with another utility. And by good credit, we mean no more than two late payments in a one-year period. Okay. But we do require um, deposits unless you have that letter of credit. And the deposit is refundable after one year with no late payments with us. Okay. So if I'm, if I'm a renter, I need a rental agreement and a deposit. Yes, or a rental agreement and a letter of credit saying you have good service history with another utility. We take TID, MID, another city, um, PG&E. How many letter of credits do we see? A lot. Really? Yes. We have a lot of people that have really good history and they bring those in. Mm, okay. So your, your request is to increase the deposit the to equal to one month. So if it's $130, I think we need to increase it for one month. Staff wasn't asking for that increase. We, we feel that where it's at, um, we're okay with where it's at. If, if the council wants to, to increase, that does you know, provoke, provide some challenges to, you know, we do have you know, a lower socioeconomic um, situation here, and some of those, those folks, that, is, that would be a challenge um, for that to increase that dramatically. Again, the council can set that direction. At this time, we were not asking for an increase. We were just asking for the uh, policy and procedures to stay the same. Yeah, I, th I think what we wanted to do is just try to make it easy for people to go over there and start service. Right, but to me, this looks like it's easy. I don't know. Right. How, no, I don't know how it could I, be I, any I'm easier. I'm saying the same thing. I, I'm reading this. I'm, I'm with you. Yeah. I mean, to me, it, it's real easy. And I think the one meeting where there was a discussion, there was a separate issue of customer, customer service, and I think that needs to be taken away from this, and that needs to be addressed separately, because to me, to start service is really easy for the city. But you go back to, if they have a letter of credit, they don't have to worry about the deposit. Right. So if they don't have good letter of credit, at least the city, to me, is protected for, you know, at least one full month's worth of utilities. 
and you're talking about $30. How when often? you're when you're looking at other other things that they got to put deposits on, the rent in a house, they usually have to put a deposit of of you know 150 to you know first and last month's rent and things like that. So in the scheme of things, you know I think that that if you have a good letter letter of credit, then you don't have to worry about the $130 deposit. Right, but not everybody may have rented before. It might be someone who's never rented oh. before. Do we do we have a lot of problems with um, people bailing on paying their bills? We have significant amounts of money in collections, yes. I, I didn't bring the statistics tonight on what's in collections. Um, but we're but we're very um, we're very diligent about getting that um, and they we get typically their final get our bill and then within two months they're turned over to collections if they haven't paid and um, it starts hitting their credit report and affecting them um, but are we successful when we do collection um, sometimes okay sometimes councilman Lane well you know looking back and the reason why I thought we were having this I mean this is fine I think it was on the customer service side that we talked about that was more as what Councilman Ember um, Linda said, Rhino said. Um, you know, I'm okay with this, but but again, I heard something over here. If you already established credit, you've already established in the city, then they don't have to bring all that stuff in. Well, no, they have to provide proof that they own the property. <clears throat> okay. So well, I think that's kind of where we were talking about before. How can we make that easier for somebody? Right. And that's this here is not showing me that. The rates and all that are fine. I, I don't see a problem. And I think Mr. Parson actually brought it up, and I think he's wanting to stand up now and say well, something. I think that it all sounds real simple. In, in my particular case, and my complaint was, sometimes it's not easy to obtain the the you know title papers it's not and i might be out of town the previous owner might be out of town or i i can't get those papers and and some somewhere latitude and longitude could be given to you know i've got m multiple um bills here that are all paid and and sometimes it's almost easier if i wrote you a check because I have that in my possession, but I might not have. And believe me, I mean, I'll be honest with you. In some cases, I might give you a bogus lease. I'm buying the property or I'm leasing it until I get it. I'm not going to bullshit. I'm not going <laughs> to tell you something that's not true. So, so when you say it's a simple situation, sometimes it's not if you're a multi-property owner. But what if you are buying property with three or four other people and I think this came up at the last meeting and you're buying it with three or four other people and somewhere down the line because you haven't provided that form somewhere down the line there's a falling out and somebody doesn't want to pay the bill doubtful that a, that an LLC which I don't own any property in an LLC but a, you know where there's multiple partners if they're property owners we're gonna pay the bill. Um, I think you get a lot of renters that may not. But sometimes it's not as simple as, let's say that I buy a property and I don't have the paperwork and I've got and I'm and I'm and I'm going to do some work. It it's sometimes not quite as simple as just bringing in the paperwork. So my my point at that point was if you pay your bills in this city, somebody could have a little bit of latitude and longitude to say, okay, as soon as you get that, would you just bring us a copy so we have it in the file? I understand, you know, I'm not asking for special treatment, to, but, but sometimes it's not as simple as just having that paperwork in your hand. Now, Mr. Parsons, I can, I can understand where you're coming from, but on the other aspect, be, be a devil's advocate, what happens if you tell the city that you took ownership of my property without the documentation, you switch the, you know, you know what I'm saying, you switch the utilities over, and then a month later you say you want to shut off, and I'm sitting there going, wait a minute here, I own the property, 
But you came in good faith and told them, and in good faith, and I think what it is, it's protecting everybody else as the, as the, as the thing goes goes forward. Um, and like you said, you know, before this was a, this was a customer ser customer service issue earlier, so that's a whole different conversation, okay? But you know, right now. We're just talking about what they need to get started. Just so you know why, you yeah. know, I wasn't able to obtain certain paperwork to get it done. And so that was there just like somewhere if, if somebody could make a decision. But I, I talked with Toby about this too. He said, we just got to have a rule. Okay. We, we need policies and procedures that are consistent across the board. And again, we're, Mr. But, Parsons' issues are unique in most cases. This is not what we run into every day. Um, and so we do feel like we've given Mr. Parson the opportunity to provide written documentation and that's really where we need is something that we can stand on. We don't think we need to change the policy. He knows where we stand and that what this is about is the council still consistent with that policy that yes, we need written documentation. Um, and if the idea of latitude on what that written documentation is, I think it's already there. Um, and there's always going to be situations that are going to come up where we're going to say, well, that doesn't quite fit the box. And that's where, you know, right. Suzanne and myself get involved to help try to rectify the situation. But a lot of times, you know, that's, that is the solution of us getting involved. And we, we always can't fix every situation, but we can generally come to a, a solution that's reasonable. Right. And that's what, we, that's what we strive to do. Ms. Dean? So we've been, we being my utility staff, and I have been working with Mr. Parson to try to accommodate his special circumstances. Um, my staff is, um, they, they just want direction on do they make these exceptions for everyone or they, do they just make them for him? And that's, that's kind of what the question is. What are the parameters? How subjective is it? And what latitude do they have to make these decisions? Can they offer um, this type of latitude to every customer? Or because we have it clearly spelled out, how do the exceptions apply? It's pretty unique. Okay. So is that what we're discussing, or are we discussing this? Policy? I don't know. No, no. <laughs> I, we were. De we, <laughs> Again, no, the, that's what I'm saying. That was a whole different conversation the, the simple that, that needs to be taken care of separately. Because right now. We're talking about when you need to get started to get your service done. Exactly, and that, those are the things that are needed, but sometimes Mr. Parsons needs to have exceptions to this. And so we've been working with him on those exceptions, but do we apply those exceptions to everyone, which is fair? Well, so again, is it something you can so use your discretion with, or is it, I mean, is that, I mean, how often do you get called in to something, or you, Toby, for something? How often does that happen? For Sounds sign up like for service? Not unique. very often. Not a sign up requirement, no. Yeah. Not very often. It's pretty unique. More, right? more, more often it's handled at Suzanne's level, but every once in a while it's at my level. But mm -hmm. I can think of right. two or three in the past but year. It's a, it's a subjective thing. And so when we start applying the rules subjectively, somebody's going to be able to claim that we're discriminating against them. We don't want to discriminate against anyone. So these are the rules council has given us. We're, if you want us to make exceptions, give us the parameters for making the exception. So that's all we're asking. So, I, and Mr. Parsons is up here, maybe we add, if he'd be willing to write a $1,000 check until he brought in the, the <laughs> I, I don't think we're gonna have too many people that are gonna write that kind of check, but that would be, that would give him something else and we would have plenty of cash. S certainly. I mean. I, uh, whatever whatever the exception is, as long as it can be applied equally to everyone sure. who needs an exception, we're perfectly okay with it. And as it is now, we're working with him every time someone okay. comes in. So then a thousand dollars. I mean, if that's what that's what we want. And that applies to everybody, right? Yeah. Just, just yeah. make it. Just Perfect. make it a thousand dollars, and then when they bring in the documentation, they, stuff, they, they get, get it back. Check back. Yeah. Perfect. But, but wait a second, then what if they don't ever bring their documentation in? And then we have $1,000. <laughs> turn off the water. And they're paying their water bill. <laughs> Mr. Donaldson. I, I, I mean, we'll, if you want to make it 1500 I don't care, but it doesn't matter. But, but there's got to be a solution, and I, 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 that would be my recommendation. If, so um, what, what you would add is a, a, just for 
practical matters under if you were an owner looking at that sheet that you're looking at what do you need to start a service under number one there closing escrow paperwork or deed or a thousand dollar deposit until that documentation is provided correct right perfect works for Ryan. okay I, I wanted to open this up for the public again because I see some people wanted to comment I think that's a great idea because thousand dollars if you made it 50 or 75 or something but a thousand dollars it's the person's got to have the intent to to do things right because they're not going to give up a thousand bucks just like oh yeah I won't bring the documentation in I don't care uh, at least me uh, to dig up a thousand bucks to put down as a deposit I'd be straining my budget a whole lot so <laughs> I think that's a good idea this is the what second or third time you guys have got brilliant ideas thank you very much I don't think that I should be talking if I didn't pay my water bill but I own I own rentals also and eight hundred and fifty dollars a person's gonna move in he's gonna pay first and last month's rent he's gonna pay a cleaning deposit we're up there in two thousand dollars people don't you know they don't have that kind of money and if I can get somebody to come up with two thousand dollars to pay first and last I'm gonna pay the water bill myself put it in my name and if I can't get it out that's a thing if it's in my name they don't pay the water bill can I have it shut off if it's my property and they're on there and I'm paying the water bill but they're paying the rent instead of eight hundred and fifty dollars it'd be nine hundred and seventy five dollars if they don't pay that rent can I have it shut off I think legally if you're property owner yeah are you sure? I, You'd probably have to go through the yeah. unlawful detainer process, and so we wouldn't recommend that if, yeah. un unless they were out. Right. And we don't do that to um, tenants where landlords are paying the bills. We do notify the tenant and give the tenant the option, though, to pay it if they want to. Okay. Um, but we don't just go out and shut off right. tenants' water if the yeah, landlord is not. Do the homeowners. We don't want to we go don't. down that path yet. No. We don't do apartment complexes either. Hmm. Yeah. We, we would want to go through the proper channels before we did that so so that's no 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 I can't do that no. okay thank you anyone so, else I'm still gonna let them move in if they're paying to, to people that work at Walmart or Kmart or taco or they can't rent my property because they don't make enough money you know that's I mean? a whole so, other discussion so I know I know, I know uh, but you have to get the right kind of people to rent your your property and now the rent is the the move-in is so much money I mean, they have to make quite yeah, a bit of money. You just need to lower your rents. Yeah, but Mr. Donaldson, Mr. Donaldson, I think we're talking about the thousand yeah. dollars is for your being a property owner. And let's say you buy two, a house across the street from you, but you don't have the documentation that you you have sole ownership of it yet. So you come in and you want to to turn the water on, turn the utility on, so you can do any kind of remodeling. I but you don't have the ownership then you write a thousand dollar deposit until you can supply the the documentation and then you get your thousand dollars back that okay. is that does not go for a rental agreement a rental agreement knowing that they're a rental tenant they should bring in a rental agreement okay that's okay so it's mostly for a property owner is what we're discussing okay yes and and that would be the thing the check would be cashed and held in escrow in a deposit right. account right. And then as soon as the paperwork's in, we do refund it. Yeah, okay. okay. Okay, is there any other discussion on this side? No. Okay, well, I'll look for, we need a, uh, well, this is the discussion item, so we'd have to bring so back. So you got the direction? We got the direction that we need, and if we need uh, council action, we'd bring that back at the next meeting. But uh, we will uh, review that policy, make the appropriate information, and, and bring back if necessary. Okay, thank you. Next, we'll move to council member referrals. Is there anyone on the council who would like to have an item placed on a future agenda? Yes, I would. I missed the last meeting, and there was a discussion about the, the TOT uh, transit occupancy tax, and I would like to uh, bring that up for discussion, bring that back for further discussion with the council. Yeah. Mr. Wells, can you? 
bring that back. So last time we had, so there's, I see three heads nodding that, that is, I, I see two heads nodding. Is there three heads nodding? Well, what, Wait, what, what, are, what are we nodding heads for? The question is, you brought this at the last meeting to bring an item forward to the council for consideration of the TOT. He wants to have a discussion about it again because he didn't get to take part in it. So well, if you were two you, and you two before, that right now, now you're three and two. And at, what, what I'm looking for is that three of you would like to bring a formal discussion item and to agendize. So last time there was only two, and a two-two is not enough to direct me it, to do is, that. Is this for the TOT advisory committee? Is that what it is? Uh, uh, Mr. Klein's bringing it up. I is that what you wanted? That's what we discussed. The mayor wanted to agendize something to talk about a TOT advisory committee. That was what it was for. It wasn't necessarily the TOT. Yes. So that's what you want to do is bring that forward. To I want to bring it back to discuss the TOT advisory committee. No. Are, are you asking for our vote? Okay. Yes. Okay. He said yes. I say yes. Yes. Uh, recognize with the current level of items that are scheduled and considered for discussion currently this is probably not likely to come until late april early may based on yeah, we, are, fine. Like, we are really impacted fine. between now and then so fine. i just want to make yep. sure that's that fine set the right expectations okay steen anything mm -hmm. mr hallahan no, mayor. mr wells Thank you, Mayor. Uh, one item of note, a couple items of note. First one, um, Crow's Landing, the uh, Crow's Landing Road, the Stanislaus County uh, received a grant for a planning grant from um, some state monies, and they're looking at the 22-mile corridor, um, basically from Modesto all the way out to um, Crow's Landing. And there's a workshop tomorrow evening at six o'clock at the County Ag Center, uh, looking for citizen really input of what what Crow's Landing should look like when it grows up uh, the roadway. So obviously we have a, a section of roadway that passes through our city if anybody's interested in that. Um, the, the audience is clearly the public, but if, uh, if any of you are interested, I can get you that information. Um, that uh, again, it's, a, it's an out public outreach looking at what the corridor might look like. The city of Modesto has taken some action recently of what they want to do within their limits. Our West Landing specific plan has a specific vision, so we're cut, we're monitoring this. Mr. Jordan is participating in the program to uh, kind of see how this might look in the long term. Basically, roadway configurations, median, no median, number of lanes, that type of thing, and this is a planning effort again, uh, using some grant funds that the county obtained. So <clears throat> that's tomorrow evening. Um, a little update on the uh, the latest information on uh, the releases from Don Pedro. The uh, as most people are aware. Um, about a week ago, uh, Don Pedro opened the spillway gates, uh, releasing uh, initially 18,000 cubic feet per second, putting um, basically the lower portion of Tuolumne River uh, in the flood stage. Um, flood stage being measured at the Ninth Street Bridge at an elevation of 55. It reached an elevation of about 60 feet. Um, the flows were reduced to 16,000 cubic feet per second, and that's where they've been for the last uh, several days. Uh, TID with our, uh, the mayor also read, wrote a letter of support, requested the U.S. Army Corps of Engineers for a deviation to be able to maintain those high flows to be able to drop the elevation of the reservoir in anticipation of anticipated runoff. Uh, that request was denied by the Corps. Um, therefore, in the next two to three days, they will have to scale back those releases. Um, which means the reservoir will stay kind of at its same level. Right now they're releasing 16,000 cubic feet per second and 14,500 is coming into the reservoir, so they're not making up much ground. And the snowpack above the reservoir is at 200%. In essence, what the Army Corps said was the downstream conditions where the Tuolumne heat meets the San Joaquin River are still are more concerning than the releases from the reservoir at, that, at this point in time. So what that means is the reservoir will stay near capacity. It's in essence at 99 percent full at this point with a very heavy snowpack above it um, and everyone will be very cautiously and carefully watching the forecast as um, two things um, that it uh, is sunny but not too sunny and not too warm because that means a higher snowpack release sooner or heavy rainfall that is warm uh, those two things will create a significant runoff which leads to higher releases from from the reservoir so um, obviously we're watching it closely our lower river bluff is still closed 
um, and will be for some period of time. Uh, the bottom nine of the golf course is closed as well, um, and that will be that way for some time. As those releases drop below the 10,000 cubic feet per second level, which we'd anticipate in the next week or so, that will get it kind of below those two elevations, but obviously those areas are, are going to be wet for a long time. And with the snowpack where it's at, we're looking at runoff conditions very high for at least into July. So, a lot of water coming down the river and heading out to the ocean, which is very unfortunate. Last thing that I've got um, in the audience, Mr. Robert Ball is our new IT manager. Uh, he started two weeks ago, and so we're happy to be here. He's entering his third week this week, so Robert uh, joins us. He's got a varied background and has, a, has an MBA in IT, and, or a master's, sorry, not an MBA, a master's in, in IT, and so we're happy to have him for filling some large shoes that Farron left us after a very long time, but uh, we're happy to have him aboard, and I'll bring him up to meet you guys when the meeting's over. Great, Mr. Westbrook. Uh, Planning Commission will be uh, considering the preferred alternative, preferred land use alternative at their meeting next Monday for the general plan update. Expected that a recommendation will be made by the commission, which we will bring to the city council at your meeting on March 27th. Okay, Mr. Jordan. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Just a uh, reiteration of Mr. Wells that uh, we expect the water to be receding out the lower bluff in the next few days, so we'll be keeping an eye on that and see if there's any impacts or issues or damages from the uh, excessive flooding and re report back to you on that. Okay. Mr. Smith? Mr. Nichols? Mr. Hallam? Thank you, Mr. Mayor and members of the Council. Steve Hallam, Economic Development Manager. I just wanted to bring to you the attention of the Council. The California Business Incentives Gateway the state treasurer's office has established a web portal that connects business owners and entrepreneurs with financial incentives throughout the state to help them grow. And the city of Ceres is now on this portal. We're one of the real, actually, we're, I think we're one of the only cities in Northern California. We've jumped on it quickly. So far, we've profiled 12 incentives that are available to new and existing eligible businesses in Ceres. The website is the, the acronym for California Business Incentives Gateway, cbig.ca.gov. And so I included my business card up there with that little uh, URL address, and I'd encourage you to check it out. And uh, we'll just keep adding as we can dream up more uh, viable incentives that we can offer here to new existing businesses. Okay. Thanks. Great. Thank you. I saw Miss McCoy, but she's probably left or out in the other room. So, gotcha. Okay. With that, we will um, adjourn to closed session. We have con conference with labor negotiator and conference with legal counsel. And then um, if there's anything to report, Tom, you'll do that out afterwards. And then after that, we will adjourn to our next regularly scheduled meeting, which will be March 13th at 6 p.m.